السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله على إحسانه وشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله داعي إلى رضوانه وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه أما بعد إخواني في الله Tonight, inshallah, we continue with our lecture series regarding the death and the grave. Tonight, we shall look from our sheikhs on how they conduct the washing and the shrouding of a dead Muslim. How they conduct ghasl al-mayt wa al-kafan lil-mayt. So this is our lecture for tonight in Khadi Fillah. The first introduction in Khadi Fillah, it is fardu kifaya. It is a must for some of the Muslims to be present to be washing their fellow dead Muslim. Number two, the Prophet is the most pure and the cleanest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he also was washed. So if the Prophet was washed, what about myself and yourself? Number three, the men are supposed to wash the men and the women are supposed to wash the women. Except for the wife, she's allowed to wash her husband and the husband is allowed to wash the wife. And number four, there's no difference between the woman and the man in most of the things that we shall look at tonight, inshallah. So the first thing, we'll ask the sheikhs what they have kept in front of us. This is what they use daily when they conduct, when they wash. So they tell us, Bismillah, Ali, what is here? This, he says, is like the belt for tying the coffin. This is the belt for tying the coffin. Type. There are four of them, he says. This is what they used to tie the hand when they're, when they're cleaning. Now. This is, for, this is the coffin. This is the white cloth that you shall be covered in when you, when you pass away. There are three of them. There are three of them. Type. What else? No, no. I see you have some cotton wool here. What is the cotton for? Cotton, they keep in the, in the places of aura in case of something that comes out, they, they remove it later on. Now, after that, what else do you have over here? These are the aprons. So the sheikhs who are washing, as you can see, they have their mask, they have their apron, and they have their glove, their gloves. So they have their, their mask, their apron, and their gloves. Type. Suleiman, what do you have over there? He has some shampoo or soap. Shampoo. He has some shavers to shave the armpits. He has nail cutter to cut the nails. He has a scissor to cut the mustache. He has a comb to comb the beard and the hair. Now, what else do you have over there? Now. This he uses for mixing the water and the kafur. Okay. That is the misk, the perfume. Uh, sidr. The sidr here, the green plant. For washing, you can use this or you can use soap. This is mixed with water. So you have to have two buckets. One bucket you mix with sidr and soap. The other bucket you mix with, with kafur. Naam, akhi, what do you have there at the end? Perfumes. Okay, different types of perfumes. MashaAllah. Bandages in case there's some, some wounds or anything that are, that's coming out. So there's bandage. At the end over there, what do you have? How many towels do you have? Approximately two to three towels. Huh? Type. These are the essentials that they use here for, for washing the, 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 dead, the dead Muslim. Are we done with this part? We can start the procedure now. Bismillah. That's, that's our brother over there. He's, he's acting. He's not dead. So, <laughs> and he's breathing heavily. We should not see your stomach. But it's not a laughing matter. The janazah, it's okay. Type. That's the, the, the brother we're going to do the practical on, on how to wash a dead Muslim. Type. So this is the table they wash, and they have another table for the coffin. They usually have two tables. One table for washing and a different table to, to shroud the dead Muslim. Type. That is how his, the brothers come from the mochari or from the house or from wherever. 
They have a death certificate already, so they've been brought. Please make sure it doesn't fall down. The dead person has rights the same way as a person who's alive. So you should not violate their rights. You should not violate their rights. So the brother is going to be kept on the table. He's going to be kept on the table to be washed. Type. Start laughing, Mata Ikhwanifillah. All of us will be in this table as every day we have two, three people or four people washed in our mosque. So, number one, they're going to keep the towel to cover between the belly button and the knees. For that is the private parts or the aura of a Muslim. So they're going to cover from the belly button and towards the knees. There's no time that the private parts of the brother will be seen. So they have, he's been covered. Now after he's been covered, the next part, cover him completely even the bottom. Okay. So the brother's privacy is protected. Now we have to remove his clothes. How do you remove the clothes? You can remove the clothes with scissors. Also you can stretch the arms if it's if it's required to stretch the arms first. Or you then you can remove the clothes if possible to remove. Or you can cut it out if it's not easy to remove. So you have removed the clothes of the brother without, without injuring the brother or harming him in any bit. The brother has his rights, even as a dead person, you cannot break his bones or anything. So you have to be very careful. So his hands are well stretched. The hands are well stretched. They've removed the top part. The bottom part has been removed. Just assume it has been removed. Type. So, it's okay. It's a, it has been removed. After this, Akhi Suleiman, you have stretched the arms. Huh? Now we want to cut the nails, to cut the mustache, and to shave the armpits. We want to cut the nails, uh, the mustache, and the nails. So the brothers, they cut the nails, as others also can cut the mustache at the same time to save time. Cut the moustache. Trim is the correct word. Trim the moustache. So the moustache is also trimmed. Also the, na also the nails on the feet. Also in the feet you cut the nails. Whichever nails are okay, there's no need of cutting. Type. Now we can start. Correct, Shah, we can start now. We can start now with the washing. The Before we start washing, we have to raise the body of the dead Muslim. He's raised up whatever is in the stomach from Najasa, from impurities, it comes out. Whatever is there from Najasa comes out. Okay? They've pressed his stomach. This is called... Uh, okay? The stomach has been pressed lightly, not forcefully. Anything that's remaining in the stomach that can come out has come out. Now we take the water. We take some water and we wash the back and the front. We wash the back and the front. Suleiman, we're okay till now? Okay, we wash the back and the front without uncovering the aura. You should not see the aura at all. Okay? So, he's washed now. Then, Istinja is also, he is cleaned. So, a lot of water is kept. He's been cleaned the front and also the back. Also, the back he has been cleaned.
Are we finished with this tinja? No? Akhi Suleiman, intahina? We're done. Okay. He wants to confirm there's no more Najasa. Uh, confirming with this uh, uh, paper or tissue paper or something of that sort. Can you use tissue paper or anything? Confirms it's clean. It's clean. It's clean. Now we can start the wudu. Now we can start with the wudu. We start washing the hands. We wash the hands of wudu three times as the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi After washing the hands, next comes the madhmada, but we don't keep water in the mouth directly. We just clean on the top of the teeth. We keep we clean on top of the of the teeth. Next, we, we clean the nose. We don't put water in the nose. Just a little bit water on top. Don't put any water in the nose. Do not put any water in the nose. It's thin shock. Then you wash the face with the beard. You put the fingers through the, through the beard. So the face is washed. You are done for wudu. Next is the hands from the fingertip to the elbow. As is wudu, including the elbow. From the fingertips to the elbow and including the elbow. Three times you start to the right side. You start to the right side. Then you go to the left side. Then you go to the left side. Thereafter, you wipe over the head. And wiping over the head and the ears is only once. Only once. Wipe over the head once. Back, front. Then the ears once. Then you come to the legs. You start with the right leg, of course. You start with the right leg. Start with the right foot. The right foot up to the ankle, including the ankle. Then the left, the left one. Taib, Mumtaz. Excellent. We have finished the wudu of the brother who's passed away. Now we can start washing. So we take the water that is mixed either with soap or with sidr. The water that's mixed with soap and sidr, we start with the head. We start washing the head and taking care for any water not to enter the nose. No water should enter the nose. So we wash the head. Please don't identify the mosque for your practical. <laughs> so you wash the head. Next, you start washing the right side. You start washing the right side. And remember, the private area should never be uncovered. You as a Muslim, you're not allowed to look at the aura of your brother. So the aura is very protected. So wash the right, right side completely, up to the bottom. Up to the bottom, completely washed. The right side washed. You start with the right side. Mumtaz, excellent. Taib, we have washed the right side. Now we lift the brother towards his left and wash his right side on the back. Lift the brother towards the left side and wash the brother on the right back. So wash his right side also. Up to his legs without exposing any of his, of his aura. Without exposing any of his aura. So wash the brother the right back side. Now we finish the right side, round one. We start on the left side. Wash the head on the left side. Taking care for no water to enter the nose. Wash completely the right side, the left side, I mean. Wash the left side up to the feet. And also, you take care, his aura, his privacy is not violated at all at any time. His aura is not violated a single time. He's washed up to the feet. So we finished the first round of washing with water and cedar. Correct? Muadzin. We finished round one. Mumtaz. Now we can start. Okay, the back side. 
the back side, we lift him towards the right. We lift him towards the right and we clean the left side. The left side we have cleaned, we have washed the left side of the brother. He's washed completely. Are you together so far, Khwani? He's washed, that's we finished one round. Now we repeat the second round with water and cedar again. We start on the head and the beard, taking care for water not to enter the nose. So we wash his head completely thoroughly. Then we wash the right side. We wash the right side of the brother or the sister. If, if uh, the sisters are also watching, this is the same way for washing the sisters also. So the, the right side is washed from the top up to the feet. Thereafter, we lift him towards the left side and wash his right side. Lift him towards the, the left side, then we wash his right side. So he's facing the left now. We wash him. Mumtaz. We have finished the right side. Now we're going to the, to the left side. Type. We start from the head. Water. This is water with soap or water and cedar. This is round two. Mumtaz, we have washed him on the, on the left side. The left top side. They use much more water than this. Because of the carpet, we can't use such a lot of water. Type. And the water is not hot water. It's cool. Cold water is better. Cool water is the best water to use. Don't use hot water. We have finished round two. Now, the back side. The back left. We lift him towards the right. The back left, we lift him towards the right. Mumtaz. Excellent. Alhamdulillah, we finished round two. We used water and cedar, or water and soap. Are you together? Round three now, we're going to use water and kafur. Water mixed with, with kafur. The same procedure, we start from the head. On the head, we start the head and the beard. We wash the entire right side, the right top side, with water and kafur. We're using water and kafur now. Water and kafur. No time is his privacy violated. Okay? And you don't, use, you don't use a lot of strength. You don't want to hurt or to injure the dead person. Also, the right back side, the same. Wash completely. We finish the right side. You use kafur because you want to retain the smell. You want to retain the coldness of the body. And you re it has a lot of uh, properties that assist the dead persons. This is the last washing we're doing. You can wash up to seven times if it's required. You can wash up to seven times if it's required. But three is recommended. One is sufficient. You can even wash once. Three is recommended. Up to seven if it's required. Up to seven if required. Now washing the left side, left top side with water mixed with kafur from the head to the bottom. Al janib al aysar. Taib. Thumma. The back side of the left side. <clears throat> Mumtaz, Sheikhs, we finished washing. Now, remove any water that's gone to the mouth or the nose or anything. That's what the Sheikh is doing. If there's any water, Mumtaz, we finished. Now we change the towel too to dry him up without exposing. So you keep this towel on top of that towel. Or first you clean, you dry up the other places first. Now. We've removed the, the wet towel without exposing any of his, of his privacy. The wet towel has been removed. Now we dry him up. Correct. We dry, we dry up the brother. See, the brother is drying him from on top. He's not exposing him at all. So we're drying the brother. Hmm? 
Hmm? Also, the table is made, uh, if there's one table, you make sure the table is, is dry. If there are two tables, you can shift from one table to the next table for kafan. Type. Now we're starting with the, no? Drying the back, okay. Now we're drying the back. Starting the right side. The then we'll do the left side. Mumtaz, excellent. Naam Shaykh, what do you do next now? Next now, okay. You're perfuming and combing. Okay. Perfuming the brother, combing him. And usually the best place to keep the perfumes is the places of, uh, of sujood. Whichever place touches the sujood, the forehead, the hands, the knees, and the feet. Okay? The places of sujood are the places we, we really concentrate with the perfume. The, the knees and the feet. So, mashallah. The beard looks very nice. Also, the hair is going to be combed if he has any hair. Type. Nam, what are we doing next, Suleiman? Next, we're now shrouding the body. We're going to shroud them in three white clothes. In three white clothes. So we're going to shroud the brother in three white clothes. And when we're shrouding also, we take care not to expose any of his, of his aura, of his privacy. All these videos will be available on the TV station, Ilm TV. I'm seeing some of the brothers are recording. You can record, no problem. But also go to Ilm TV, I-L-M space TV, and you can get the video, inshallah. Hopefully, we have not made any errors. If there are any errors, you can send in the comments and we'll correct ourselves, inshallah. So three coffins, three pieces of cloth. The top part is longer than the bottom part. The top part is longer than the bottom part. Okay? Okay. So three pieces of uh, of coffin. The coffins most in Nairobi are sponsored by our sisters. So most of the times the sisters who buy coffins for most of the of the Muslims. May Allah bless all of them. Okay. Sheikh, maybe you explain a little bit what you're doing. Even me, I'm lost. <laughs> okay. Just rolling it for... This is just the preparation part of, uh, of the coffin. Okay. Okay, because you're using one table, that's why they're doing this way. Usually they have two tables, so this will be ready at the bottom. This will have been kept at the bottom, and you put the dead person on top, and you just cover him. Because you are using only one table, they have, uh, being, they're being innovative or creative. Okay? That is cotton wool. What is the cotton wool for? So you use the cotton wool just to, to ensure non -najas, any najasa comes out from the private parts does not, uh, does not datify the coffin. Okay? Of course, many of these things is because of the technological advance. It's not a must. The Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba did not use many of these things. They didn't have gloves. They didn't have uh, aprons. But uh, the most important thing is for the washing and the coffin to be done correctly. Okay? 
without exposing any of his privacy, the coffin is kept there on one side. And he stretched the brother. And it's like, Shukwanafillah, not to be very many people participating in washing. At least two or three is okay. Do not be, be very many people participating in the washing so as to protect also the privacy of the dead person. Whatever privacy, sometimes uh, some signs can be seen of that person who's passed away that you have to keep private. Some good signs or sometimes some bad signs. For example, the, the person becomes very black. It becomes very black. Or some of them have the, the tashahud. So we want to keep everything of theirs private to the last moment. Okay? So, okay. Now the coffin is here, three pieces. That's the first one they keep. And this is uh, not everywhere in the world they use it this way. It's unique to Kenya where they have the, the head opening. Now, the, the last towel has been removed. It has not been exposed even once. Alhamdulillah. Okay? It started from the left side to the right side. Now? Left side. The Sheikh was telling me it's like how you keep your hand in Salah. Left, then, then right. Left, then right. That's what he says. And he says this is the, the, common, the person who's died a, a normal death. Other people come when they're burnt. Others have drowned. Others in accidents. So every situation has its unique, unique way of doing it. This is the death of a person who's died with, in a normal way. He doesn't have any injuries. This is the third one we have kept. The top is longer than the bottom. Are you together? Okay. At this stage, if anyone wants to kiss the brother goodbye or anything, the sheikh leaves the face, leaves the face open for a while. Thereafter, they start tying with this belt. They start tying the coffin with the belt so that the coffin does not, does not get exposed. This is how every single one of us will be done for when he pass away. And the brothers will stand for you. Your fellow Muslim brothers, it's not, it's not a must. It's not a must to keep, to keep a mark. Also, some people, they build over the graves. What do you think about that? There should no building over the graves. After that, I see the sheikhs, they talk after the janazah. They remind people about this stage that we're all going to go through. So, alhamdulillah, with that, we have concluded our lecture, our practical lesson. Then some questions. Now, Bashir. There? There? On the head. The rope that's tied on the head. In the grave it's open or it's, le it's left? It's open. All the belts is removed. Okay. Is the head exposed? The head is exposed? Yeah. So, you, okay. They remove all these tyings. They put some mud on the head support and they, they leave it open like that. Not completely open, tied like this anyway, but not with the, with the belt. Any other questions? You can ask the brothers. They're the sheikhs today. Now. Mm. Unique to Africa, or I've not seen in many places. The open head, the way they open the head and the keep. Yeah, it's, not in, it's okay. It's not a harm. Now? Well, it's just how people with the different madhabs and the different... Uh, Learnings, they, they did that. No? Any other questions, dear brothers? No. Uh. No, you don't need to use pampas. Even the cotton wool is not a must. It's just something they have, they have brought up because of experience. They have seen it's important, but it's not a must. There should not be any clothes. You cannot put for them boxers or t shirt or something. There cannot be any clothes. No? Do you use pampas? <laughs> he says you can use it if there is any major reason. But better not to use it. Better not to, to use it. Any question? No. Uh, 
if you use more than three coffins? I don't know. Do you know? Three is sufficient. There's no need for israf. For all these expenses are coming out of the inheritance of the people who have passed away. So you should not spend except what is necessary. You should not spend except what is necessary. Now, the same way you, when you have janaba, you always start with washing your private parts, then you do wudu, then you do ghusl. So wudu always comes before, before washing. Before washing. Two final questions. Now, Sometimes they use warm water, but preferably cold water is the best. Cold water or cool water. Cool water, not cold. Uh, not the, the water won't affect you so much, inshallah. Now. Preferably you should pray in Arabic. If you're not able to pray in Arabic, I don't know the answer to that. I need to do some research. Now, what on Valishwa? Some of them, one of some of them are put on thob. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a thob. It's just the part of the coffin. They, they just, they create, they be creative. Now. The story of Musa ibn Umair. Musa ibn Umair didn't need to be washed as he was a shaheed. The shaheeds are not, they are not washed. So you can be buried in any state they are in. Now, last question. Now? Don't force, if the arm is folded, don't force, don't force it. Just try slowly to, to relax it. Just try slowly to relax it. If the eyes are open, Haji Suleiman, what do you do if the eyes are open? You try closing the eyes, but don't force anything. Do not force anything. Any questions? Final question? Barakallahu feekum wa akhiru da'awana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.